Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Pet Alliance 2 video. Today we're going to be go hopping into the top 10 pets that flopped. These pets have either sucked so hard that they've never seen the light of day, or they had interesting concepts and they just weren't that good in execution. So without further ado, let's start off with Ferdron. Oh boy, this has to be amazing. It's a dragon. What can go wrong? Well, unfortunately, Ferdron is anything but good. It seems like Pet Alliance 2 just didn't know what to do with him. His stats suggest that he's supposed to be a tank, but there is no way in hell Ferdron can tank. With two magical attacking innates, where his stats clearly suggest that he's supposed to be a physical attacker, it's just unfortunate seeing such a cool looking dragon be such a pile of garbage. And that's exactly where he belongs. Ferdron is just another failure of the dragon that should just be thrown in the garbage and forgotten about. Number 9. Tornafin. Tornafin is one of the more interesting pets in the game. But that's pretty much where, it, where, we, where we draw the line. Because interesting as he may be, his stats are mediocre. And he doesn't really put off that much damage. But he does have two passive skills. Not passive skills, support skills. But these supports don't really help his case all that much. Tornafin is just a very useless support. He's very useless on battle. He's just all around useless. And to top it off, the supports are in the worst possible slots you can ever put them in. You're putting them in a B and an A grade slot? Are you kidding me? You're taking away one of my B grade slots and one of my A grade slots to make this guy a support, but a battler at the same time? That's just not going to fly. Tornafin, you need to figure your stuff out. You're bad. Get out of my sight. You're done. Number eight, Garudon. Now here's a pet. I can totally hate on. Garudon is one of the cooler looking grass pets, but as we've seen with uh, Ferdron, looks are not at all that matters. Her stats are disappoint me every time I look at them. She's supposed to be a dot pet, but she's the worst combination ever. Normal grass? What kind of combination is that? Are you kidding me? What the hell am I supposed to do with that? Fart on them? Garudon would be so much better with any other type. Give her a fairy, give her a ground. She looks more like a fairy or a ground type anyway. What's stopping you from changing her type? What's What was your thought process in making her grasp normal? If you're going to make a pet, look at Fienerb. He has the worst innate ever for a dot pet, but he's amazing. Why couldn't Garudon do the same thing? If only Garudon had a different typing... Garudon would actually be useful. But, there is one saving grace. Her support, Thorn. But, even with that saving grace, there are way better alternatives, like Gerion and Sharky, who have the same supports, and extra supports that help further. So, Garudon all around is just not that good of a pet, and very disappointing all around. Sadly to say, Garudon, you were cool, but that's about it. <clears throat> Number seven, Spiky. Ooh, it's a cat man thing? Yeah, besides the looks, don't let this furball distract you from the fact that he is god-awful. Take a look at his stats, and then take a look at his innate. Reflects damage. But... He has the worst defense I've ever seen for a tank ever. And his HP is pretty mediocre too. I don't understand the logic behind this pet. But I do understand the logic of being terrible. And this pet is the incarnation of every single definition of terrible. All molded into one furball of disappointment. That is spiky in a nutshell. Moving on to number six. Man, oh man, do I hate having to put Cyborg on this list. 
But the fact of him being glitched to never have the correct NA, even though it's literally right there. It's literally right here. Why can't he never have this innate? If he had this innate, he would be 10 times better. But the fact that he is glitched makes him completely unusable in battle. Not to mention his stats aren't the best ever. So even if you wanted to finagle it with that crappy innate he gets when he's a little tiny venue garbage bird thingy, it's just not going to work. You, you definitely need that perfect setup for Cyborg to work. And it's just... Really unfortunate to see such an awesome pet be flushed down the drain because of one major glitch flaw that Pet Alliance never fixed. Cyborg number six. Another cool pet, Zoowulf number five. Man, this pet has such a cool idea. He has interesting innate. He has a pretty he has pretty decent stats all around, but there is just one major flaw. Despite his stats being decent, that's kind of just about it. If you take him into battle, he's pretty much like a paper in, in battle. You throw him in there, and he gets maybe a paper cut on your enemy, then boom, he gets obliterated by one hit. Maybe two hits if you're lucky. But honestly, Zoolf has just terrible all-around defense. I mean, if he had a little more base HP, a little more base physical and magical defense, a little bit more magical attack, then he would really be a, the perfect counterpick for most of those passives that really tend to annoy you in the high tier games. But having the really bad HP, defense, all that, just makes Zoolf one of the more terrible S pets in the game. Sorry Zoolf, but you're number five. Number four, Radisaur, is the weirdest robot you can ever lay your eyes on. She, he, whatever the gender is, has arms cutting out of the ears? Are you, what is that? Ugh, whatever. Looks aside, it, it's definitely not the worst pet in the world, but, uh, her HP and defense... 99.9% .9 of the time, just like Zoowulf, this thing's going to die very, very quickly. Maybe in one hit. No, definitely in one hit. Radisaur is just... Has some nice... Has a nice concept. It's pretty decent attacks and a little bit of decent speed. But really, if Radisaur just had a lot more HP, that would be fine. You don't even need to really cut in more defense. Just give her more HP, speed, physical attack, and this thing would be a monster in the battlefield. But, sadly, Radisaur just falls on the category of just terribleness. So, Radisaur, number four. <sighs> number three, Pegasus. This little My Little Pony reject seems really good on paper, actually. But then you realize when you take this thing into battle, you realize you're not doing much damage. And then you think, think to yourself, my stats are fine. What's going on here? It's like Pet Alliance 2's creators were determined to make this thing bad at all costs. It's almost as if Pegasus has a hidden ability to do minimum damage all the time. Even when you debuff the hell out of your opponent, which uh, Pegasus is clearly a master in doing, it still doesn't really feel like Pegasus does all that much damage. Pet Alliance, what have you done to this thing? This thing was actually supposed to be not that bad of a pet, but it just ended up flopping on its side. Like some sort of wild animal. What, if, what did you do to it? What did you do to this poor Pegasus? That's Pegasus, number three. Oh boy, this one's going to be controversial. Number two, Aquavi. As much as I, would like, as I would like to say Aquavi is like one of the better S pets in the game, Aquavi is really not all that impressive of a pet. Like, Aquavi is supposed to be a dot tank, I get that, but Aquavi really fails in that tanking department as the, his stats are 
not really all that impressive for tanking. Like, if he had a little more defense and magical defense, he'd probably be able to do it. But, like, he just has weakness to multi-hitters. He has weakness to dots all around. He's just, and even, like, a big pet like Ares can take him down. And he's a water type, for Christ's sake. Why does Aquavi feel like Undina's rejected poop? That's kind of what Aquavi feels like. I know this is probably going to give me a lot of backlash in the comments, but, like, why is Aquavi so bad? I get Aquavi's supposed to be a dot tank, but he doesn't really do that well either. Multi-hitters and dot and even some big guys up uh, up on the top leagues destroy this guy. Maybe in like the lower tier he does good, I guess. But really, Aquavi is just not all that impressive. Aquavi is number two. Okay, okay. Before you roast me in the comments, hear me out. I know Pina is a fan favorite. But in all honestly, Pina is not really all that good. Her stats are nothing really... To cry home about. Not to mention, Peanut can't really take a hit very well. I know a lot of you probably won't like me saying this, but Peanut is honestly not that good of an SS pet. Maybe sometime in the near future, Peanut will get an X form that will revive her former glory, I guess, when she was earlier released back in like a couple of, two years ago, I guess. But Really, Pina isn't really all that good. And will probably always stay on the lower end of the spectrum of SS Pets. Sorry, but that's kind of how I feel about Pina. She doesn't really do all that impressive damage and all these... Yeah, I guess you can kind of make a crit build with her, but we already have like a way better, stronger Pina called Libra. Just use Libra if you want to use someone who can multi-hit and crit really well. I'm sorry, but Pina isn't really all that impressive. Pina is honestly going to stay on the probably the bottom of the SS ranking tier list for a very long time. Unless, until maybe she gets an X form, but until then, Pina will stay on the bottom. And that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this top 10 ranking of the pets that flopped. Um, don't forget to check the link down in the description below. There's a cool neon-colored gaming mouse. Lights up, and it can light up your day when you're playing on your game console. Not console, but console. No, on your laptop or on your PC when you want to do your gaming. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're if you're new to the channel, subscribe, share a video, and like. That would be so appreciative, and I'll see you in the next video.